Hello my friends and welcome back. Today I have five thrift flips to share with you, all of which are super quick and easy. So let's go ahead and get started. Today's first project is this spice rack, which I found at the thrift store for $2.99. The first step is to add some paint to brighten it up. I'm using Folk Arts acrylic paint in wicker white. I gave the whole shelf two generous coats and then let it dry. I then cut some scrapbook paper into strips to go on the front edges of the spice rack. I had to cut two different pieces and then try to match up the design as best as possible because the scrap paper is only 12 inches and my spice rack was about 17. After making sure that the scrap of paper was wide enough and that the design matched up well enough, I was ready to attach it to the spice rack. And for that, I used Mod Podge. I find that I have the best success when I work in small sections. Using a paintbrush, I applied some Mod Podge about four inches or so, and then I would smooth down the scrap of paper, and then I would repeat the process until I had the whole thing covered. Once I had all the scrapbook paper applied, I let it sit for about three hours. I wanted to make sure that it was completely dry before I moved on to the next step. I then took a piece of fine grit sandpaper and ran it along the curved edge of my shelf to take off the excess paper. It doesn't take much, so you're gonna to wanna to be careful. But this technique does such a good job on curved edges. So much easier than trying to cut it precisely before installing it onto my project. So I love this technique. And of course, I like to lightly distress my projects. So this does two steps in one. It removes the paper and it distresses the edges, which I think is perfect. After removing all the sanding dust from my project with a microfiber cloth, I went back in with the Mod Podge and I sealed over all of the scrapbook paper. I concentrated on the edges, making sure that those were covered very well. I allowed that coat to dry completely, and then the final step was to go in with the Mod Podge one more time and use it as a sealant or a top coat on the rest of the shelf. So all the white sections, I gave it a nice thick coat. And this is what the spice rack now looks like. I think it is so cute. I have it hanging in my office above my side table where I like to display some of my current favorite things. I'm using it to corral some of my small dog figures that I like to collect and I think it is absolutely perfect. For today's next project, I'm going to be using this Chanel bedspread which I thrifted years ago and have just done nothing with. It's got a few snags, it's got some discoloration but a lot of it is still good. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some pillow covers. I've shared how I make my pillow covers many times. I will link that down below for you, so I won't bore you with that. The only thing I did differently with this was make it slightly smaller by an inch because I didn't add that decorative edge on the outside. I didn't think it needed it with all the texture that this pillow has. Rayma promptly checked them out and I think she agrees they're pretty fabulous. I'm probably gonna make some more because I love the texture of them. They would look awesome grouped with a colorful accent pillow in front. Today's next project is this lovely lampshade. I loved the shape, the scalloped edge, the pleating, but I didn't really care for the blingy edges, so I think I can replace that. I assumed that it was glued on, but once I got looking at it, I realized that someone had hand sewed it on. It was attached with clear thread, so I used my scissors and snipped a few of the threads, and then I gently pulled and snipped, and it came out super easy, and underneath it, was the original braided edge, which I thought was fabulous. So I didn't even have to replace that. I also wanted to share with you these light bulb clips that I got off of Amazon because the lamp that I plan to use this lampshade on does not have a lampshade harp. These go on top of the light bulb itself and then holds the lampshade. And I thought it was genius. I'd never seen these before. They come in a two pack for $10 and I will make sure to leave a link down in the description box as well as other links for products that I've used in today's video. 
This is a lamp that I picked up for $15 that I'm going to use the lampshade on. I love this. I think the table is so cool. It is brass, but all the different sections have kind of weathered differently. So I was going to give it a makeover, but it's grown on me. So I'm going to leave it the way it is. I added the light bulb, the lampshade clip with the shade, and now it looks like this. And I absolutely love it. I think it is perfect for this cozy little nook in my bedroom. Up next are these silverware drawers, which I found for $5. I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver to remove these supports inside the drawer, which I'm not going to be using anymore. I then took a hammer and pounded the nails to the back side of the drawer and then removed each of those nails. Then I used a putty knife to help me pry off the fabric covered cardboard in the bottom of each of the drawers. I removed as much of the cardboard as I could and then I soaked off the rest of it. To do that, I wet a sponge and then dabbed it on to the cardboard until the cardboard was saturated with water. Let it sit for a little bit to soften it up and then I came back in with my putty knife to scrape off the rest of it. This also worked really well for softening up the glue and removing a lot of that as well. Once the drawers were finished, it was time to do some sanding. I'm using a coarse grit sandpaper to remove all of the old stain on this box. Once I had the whole box sanded down, drawers included, I went over the whole thing again with a fine grit sandpaper as well. And here's what the box looked like when I was completely done sanding. It basically took it down to bare wood, so I'm going to now stain it with this cherry stain from Linwax. And finally, I lined all the drawers with some scrapbook paper and glued it down using some Mod Podge. And this is how the finished silverware drawers turned out. I think this is so cool. I need to figure out what I'm going to end up storing in here. It'll most likely be some postcards, maybe some handkerchiefs. I'm not really sure. But right now, I have it styled in my living room, and I absolutely love it. The next project is this panda planter that I found for $2.24. I'm going to turn it into a pin cushion because this little mess maker decided to get a hold of mine that I've had for years and years and chew it all up. So I am definitely in the need of a nice big pin cushion before I start any more sewing projects and I think this is going to work out perfectly. So the first thing I did was find some fabric and cut it into a circle. This is a 12 inch circle. I just used tape plate as a template. Then I'm going to take a needle and thread and I'm going to sew a basting stitch all along the outside edge of my fabric. This does not need to be perfect. You just need to make sure that you can go all the way around your circle. Once you've gone all the way around with your thread, you're going to gently start pulling both ends of your thread very gently so that you don't break the thread and it will start to forming like this little ball shape. 
keep pulling very gently adjusting the fabric if you need to and then pull it as tight as you can until you've got a little hole on the top grab yourself some fiber fill and start filling it up I like to fill mine very full so much so that it is a little tricky to get it closed but it makes for a nice firm pin cushion after it's filled, once again, gently pull on the thread to close it up, and this is where it gets a little tricky. Holding on to the thread, close it as tightly as possible, and tie one knot. Then hold on to the thread without the needle in it as tight as you can, while at the same time, with the needle end of the thread, you're going to sew close the opening. To do this, I grab a little bit of fabric with the needle on one side, and I come up on the other side of the circle, grab a little fabric on that side, and then I pull tight. Then I start on the first side, once again grab some fabric, come up on the opposite side, grab some fabric there, and pull tight. Making sure every time I grab a little fabric, I'm in a slightly different position. After about three or four um, stitches, it'll start to hold its shape. I like to do 10 to 12 stitches, then I'll tie off the thread with a knot, and that is it. Next, I'm going to check the fit to make sure it seems like it'll work, and it does. However, I feel like it's falling down into my planter. Like, the planter is really wide and deep, so I'm gonna add some more fiber fill into the bottom so that when I put my pin cushion in, it has a nice firm feel to it, and that seems to take care of the problem. At this point, I would normally take out my hot glue gun and attach the pin cushion to my container, but I don't want to do that in this case because I want it to be only temporary. Plus, I really don't think it needs it. It seems really firm, and I can totally use it the way it is. So I'm going to skip that step. I am, however, going to add some pretty sewing pins to it, get it all ready for the next time I am going to do some sewing. And that is it. I now have a pin cushion that is both useful and adorable. I love this project. Now I can decorate with the little panda, which is super adorable. I have it sitting on the side table here. It will most likely be up in my cubby sitting here most of the time until I need to pull it out and do a little sewing and then it can do its job and it will look adorable and I think this is such a fun project. So that my friends are the projects that I finished to share with you guys today. I had so much fun working on each one of these. I hope you enjoyed them. I would love to know down in the comments which was your particular favorite. So leave me a comment and hit that subscribe button if you're new and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye now.